fears of a mass migration because of the crisis in Haiti. The crisis spiraling out of control. Violence is everywhere in the capital. The illegal immigrants from Haiti, they had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear. Immigration has long been a contentious and complex issue for the United States. From debates over border security to discussions about the treatment of asylum seekers, the topic of immigration has been a constant source of controversy and concern. And now it seems that a new border crisis is on the horizon, one that has the potential to completely drown the country. President Biden's administration has made it clear that they are committed to a more compassionate and inclusive approach to immigration. However, America is about to learn just how disastrous President Biden's open-door policies are for national security. So what exactly is happening at the border, and what does it mean for the United States? Join us as we discuss this new border crisis and what it means for the U.S. The situation in Haiti has escalated into a profound crisis, with the onslaught of gang violence compelling thousands to abandon their residences, businesses, and educational institutions, leading to widespread closures. Consequently, U.S. Border Patrol agents based in Florida are sounding the alarm about an imminent surge of undocumented immigrants from Haiti, acknowledging their lack of preparedness to handle such a massive influx. An internal communication within the agency, as revealed by the Post, painted a grim picture warning that a single landing could overwhelm resources and severely hamper response capabilities to additional arrivals. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis posted on X, I have directed the Division of Emergency Management, the Florida State Guard, and state law enforcement agencies to deploy over 250 additional officers and soldiers and over a dozen air and sea craft to the southern coast of Florida to protect our state. Local law enforcement and the Sunshine State have also expressed concerns, especially since it's turtle nesting season, which means people who live along the beach are asking to keep the lights turned off. According to Martin County Sheriff William Snyder, we're very vulnerable here on the Treasure Coast. We don't have enough federal resources on the water. They do the best they can. We know from experience if they make it to the beach, they will run, they will hide, and we will have a complex law enforcement issue. The turmoil in Haiti has reached a critical juncture with reports of rampant looting and arson targeting banks and government establishments. Gangs have seized control of police precincts, prisons have been breached, and gunfire echoes through the streets of the capital city, Port-au-Prince. Amidst this chaos, a formidable alliance of armed gangs continues its relentless assault on a fragile Haiti while the political party associated with a former coup leader advocates for assuming leadership, heightening concerns that the nation teeters on the brink of complete collapse with mere days or even hours left before the political catastrophe. For many Americans, the pressing question at hand revolves around whether President Biden will approach the influx of Haitian migrants any differently than he has handled the previous influxes. The resounding answer seems to be a resolute no. Expect a familiar pattern when Biden extends assistance and solace to the undocumented immigrants, secures superficial commitments to appear in immigration court in the distant future, and then redirects them to rely on the financial support of major cities. Critics point to the administration's track record of allowing entry to individuals with criminal backgrounds and potential ties to terrorism through the southern border, raising concerns about the potential infiltration of yet another cohort of gang members in into the country. Furthermore, there are apprehensions about the influx of non-criminal migrants from Haiti, a nation plagued with extreme poverty and systemic dysfunction. These individuals, arriving with little to their name, are expected to seek substantial assistance, with President Biden poised to foot the bill using the hard-earned tax dollars of ordinary Americans. Complicating matters further, Haiti's embattled Prime Minister Ariel Henry found himself stranded abroad earlier this month during a critical moment. His attempted return from a state visit to Kenya via the Dominican Republic was thwarted as commercial flights to Haiti remained grounded. Denied entry into the Dominican Republic, Henry's charter plane was diverted to Puerto Rico as confirmed by an official from the U.S. territory, while inquiries to the Dominican Foreign Ministry went unanswered by the Miami Herald. Kenyan President William Ruto made a bold declaration, expressing his readiness to dispatch 1,000 of his police officers to provide assistance to Haiti following the signing of a bilateral agreement with Prime Minister Henry. Henry, assuring U.S. and Haitian officials of his swift mobilization capabilities, Ruto has affirmed that his troops can be prepared for deployment within a mere 72-hour time frame. The White House has placed its trust in this commitment and has opted against the deployment of U.S. forces and committing to expediting the multi
multinational support mission spearheaded by Kenya, which has been in the works for over 16 months. Despite these efforts, opposition from Republicans in Congress persists regarding the allocation of the millions of dollars pledged by the Biden administration to aid in supporting the mission. The crucial U.S. funding is essential for covering the costs associated with the mission's planning and execution. President Ruto has made it unequivocally clear that in the absence of adequate funding, his troops will remain stationed within their homeland. Pierre Esperance, a prominent human rights activist in Port-au-Prince, echoed these sentiments, stressing the pressing need for a rapid and robust response to bolster law enforcement efforts. With gangs proliferating and instances of looting on the rise, Esperance warned in the imminent escalation of the crisis if timely support is not extended to reinforce the police forces on the ground. So how exactly did the situation start in Haiti? Well, turns out that the country's been in a mess for a while now. First off, imagine living in a place where you're scared to even step out of your house unless you absolutely have to. People in the capital city, Port-au-Prince, are basically cooped up at home because they're afraid of all the violence and gangs roaming around. It's not just a feeling, it's real violence, murders, and the constant threat of getting kidnapped. And it's not just about being scared. It's about living with this constant feeling of dread. Every time you step out, you're on high alert, watching out for anything suspicious. You've got these gangs making crazy demands for ransom, like asking for $200,000. Haiti has always had its share of problems, but now it's like they've hit rock bottom. Things have just been going from bad to worse. First, there was this huge prison break that set off chaos all over the place. Then you've got violent clashes breaking out in important places like the central bank, the airport, and even a soccer stadium. And it's not just random chaos. These gangs are blocking off the main port, which means tons of people are on the brink of starving. We're talking about 1.5 million people here. And it's not just some random gang causing trouble. It's these big shot gang leaders like Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier who are calling the shots. They're basically threatening the prime minister, saying they want him out or else they're going to start a full-on civil war. Now, after that visit to Kenya, where he was helping to organize a U.S.-funded Kenyan peacekeeping force to be sent to the Caribbean nation, Henry finally announced he would resign on March 12th. However, his resignation comes with a condition. He will stay Step down only after the establishment of a transitional council and the appointment of an interim prime minister subject to the approval of Henry and his cabinet. Despite these developments, the Kenyan peacekeeping force has yet to be deployed, adding further complexity to the situation. Assuming office in the aftermath of President Jovenel Moise's assassination in July of 2021, Henry has faced mounting criticism from Haitians both domestically and internationally for the persistent delays in holding elections. The political landscape in Haiti remains stagnant with no elections conducted since 2016, leaving the country without a functional parliament or president. Haiti, known as the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, has been grappling with a power vacuum that has been exploited by armed gangs following Moise's assassination. The orchestrated killing of Moise, allegedly carried out by a group of foreign mercenaries predominantly comprised of Colombians and a handful of Haitian Americans, as per charges levied by the U.S. Justice Department, further underscores the tumultuous tumultuous circumstances surrounding Henry's tenure, during which he himself was implicated as a primary suspect at one point. The recent upheaval in Haiti poses significant challenges for U.S. foreign policy concerning issues such as drug trafficking and immigration. A recent United Nations report highlights the influx of increasingly sophisticated weapon smuggling into Haiti from the U.S., particularly originating from Florida, contributing to the escalation of chaos and violence within the nation. After President Jovenel Moise's assassination in 2021, gangs have basically taken over the capital. It's like something out of a movie, except it's real life. These gangs are using all sorts of messed up tactics to control the city. We're talking about commercial terrorism, sexual violence, massacres, extortion, and kidnappings. And it's not just a small group of thugs we're talking about here. There are around 200 gangs gangs in Haiti, with about 100 of them just chilling in Port-au-Prince. That's a whole lot of bad guys running the show. The United Nations even says that 60% of the capital's territory is under gang control. That's a pretty scary thought. And it's not just the locals who are feeling the heat. The U.S. repatriated over 21,000 Haitian migrants in 2022. These people are being sent back to a country where violence and displacement are everyday realities. It's a tough situation all around. Kidnappings in Haiti have skyrocketed with a 105% increase in victims compared to the previous year. Homicides are up by 35% too. 
It's like the gangs are just getting more and more brazen with their violence. And it's not just about physical harm either. There are reports of gangs using sexual violence to assert their power. What's even scarier is that some of the people who are supposed to be keeping the peace might actually be in cahoots with the gangs. The UN says that there could be a significant number of active duty police officers who are actually members of these criminal organizations. It's like the people who are supposed to protect the citizens are the ones causing harm. That's some next level level corruption right there. And it's not just a problem for Haiti. The U.S. is feeling the effects, too. They detained over 7,000 Haitian migrants in 2022, which is a huge jump from previous years. It's like a whole new level of crisis at our doorstep. James Foote, the U.S. Special Envoy for Haiti, made a really good point when he said that the U.S. has been looking at Haiti through the lens of national security and immigration. But what they're missing is that with the gangs in control, Haiti has become a major hub for all sorts of illegal activities. Drugs, Drugs, arms, and human trafficking. It's not just a problem for Haiti, it's a problem for everyone. So yeah, things are pretty messed up in Haiti right now. The gangs have taken over and it's causing chaos for everyone involved. Let's hope that some real solutions can be found soon because this situation is just not sustainable. This is something the Biden administration needs to consider before letting droves of Haitians enter the U.S. What do you think about this issue? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section.